Welcome back to Good Guardian Canine Working Dog. Good Guardian Canine Working Dog, more than just a dog. This is the second part of No Loose Skin or Boxer in Connie Corso. And in this video, I'll be sharing on the boxer being crossed into the Connie Corso. I said I would discuss why boxers were crossed into the dogs and whether or not the offsprings of that are Connie Corso or are they hybrids. So... Hopefully you learn some things from this video. As you've seen in the first part, I've used a voice command, which I think is a little bit more clearer to listen to than my own voice. So hopefully that's not a distraction from the actual information that is quite accurate. Hopefully you learn some things, as I've said, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Enjoy this one. Take care of your families. Enjoy the dogs. Enjoy the videos. And I will see you. First, let me say that I will not spoon feed anyone with information on the Connie Corso, you will have to do some research and homework on your own if you are really interested in the traditional Connie Corso. I have done detailed videos in the past with book references where the information can be found as well, but only to receive many insults from viewers, while they argue back and forth with each other over the information. I have long since removed those videos. That is not the purpose for these Connie Corso videos. The purpose is to educate those who are interested in the real Connie Corso, the traditional coursing dog of Italy, not what is being promoted since the 1970s as Corso. If you are genuinely interested in the real Connie Corso, you will have no problem doing some quality research on your own to verify this information. I will suggest though, if you intend to have correct information on the real Connie Corso, do not rely on these mainstream breeders' websites for your information on the traditional Connie Corso. Also, to gain some good insight on the nature of these dogs, you must study a bit of Greek, Roman, and Italian history because the people and their cultural lifestyle determined the type of dogs they needed and the temperament the dogs had to have to do the work required of them. Do some reading on the Greek molossers because the dogs of Rome are Greek dogs. Read the writings of noblemen of Rome and Italy who hunted with coursing dogs from the 11th century forward, also books written on ancient mastiffs and fighting dog breeds. The popular information most are reading online contains much error, and is usually posted by those with the hybrids. It seems they cannot even identify the hybrids in their own kennel, or, they are simply keeping the lie going because it is too costly to restock their yard with the real Connie Corso. Why is it, that 99.98% of all the breeders' websites that I have gone through, all have photos of the traditional Connie Corso of history, but their own personal dogs in their kennels are hybrids? The fact is, they are in love with the idea of the dogs of history, but they love the money they are making from the hybrids more than the real Connie Corso. To be frank, most breeders of the so-called Corso today cannot handle a yard full of traditional Connie Corso, they carry a high level of dog aggression, these are working dogs that are always thinking. They need a job to do. I understand it is difficult to accept that all of your dogs may not be what you thought they were, especially if you have invested a lot of time and money into your kennel or yard. But the true test of character is not so much what you may lose or gain after learning the truth, but, it is what you do after learning the truth. It is very important for those with the many opinions without understanding to know and accept that it is not your opinions that determines that a dog is Corso and it is not your past experiences with what you call a Corso that makes the dog Corso. It is also certainly not most of your mentors, almost all of the mentors are hybrid breeders. My point is, because you have never seen a Corso like this or that, does not mean it is not an Italian Connie Corso by tradition. I hear so many saying, I have never seen a Corso like this or that. The dog is not Corso because you have seen or have not seen one like it. Corso is Corso because of the genetic makeup by the traditional Italian standard, and the dog conforms to that also in phenotype. Please keep in mind that similar does not mean same. With that said, let us continue. Now, let me state some obvious points of truth before going any further. 1. The Connie Corso today is not the war dog of Rome, it is nowhere near the level of aggression and bone mass that the war dogs of Rome had. The traditional Connie Corso today is simply a descendant of Molossers which were brought to Rome. Brought to Rome from where? Well, if you are genuinely interested in the real Connie Corso do some homework on your own, especially if you intend to become a breeder of Corso. 2. 
The real Connie Corso was bred to be a very aloof working dog, its temperament disqualifies it from dog shows or any similar human social exhibitions. 3. Anyone who claimed to love Connie Corso and breed for dog shows and or participating in them is one of two situations, number one they do not love the Connie Corso, or number two, their dogs are not real Connie Corso. You would have to purposely selectively breed against the dog's natural temperament in order for it to be accepted in a dog show, and a true lover of the real Connie Corso would never do that. Only those breeders who are lovers of the money associated with the dog shows do that. 4. Being a popular well-respected breeder of the so-called Corso does not mean your dogs are real Connie Corso. 5. There is a false narrative being tossed about by some, that the Connie Corso is not a breed suggesting it was only a type of dog in ancient Italy. That is not correct, the Cani Corso is a type and also a breed of dog in the same animal, but breed is not defined by opinions. There are scientific and genetic principles at work which are used to determine a breed of any kind, not just dogs. Anyone with basic understanding of genetics and science understands these entry-level principles. If not, here is one principle, a breed must be able to reproduce after its kind consistently, if a dog cannot do this, it is classified as a hybrid or mongrel. 6. The real Connie Corso is a scissor bite only dog, this means it reproduces a scissor bite consistently, no other bite. 7. The movement of the traditional Connie Corso is a cat like movement or a cat like gait, only. Most so called Connie Corso owners and breeders alike cannot identify a cat like gait. I have seen all kinds of hybrid dog swagger being called cat like movement, repeatedly. 8. The DNA test results the labs are producing are not reliable in determining whether or not a dog is pure Connie Corso or not, simply because the original genetic samples that were collected by the labs to be used to test each dog against, were collected from not just traditional dogs alone, but a mixture of traditional Corso and hybrids as well. Here are some concerns I have regarding scientific lab testing for authentication of K9 DNA. Whether it is a home test kit or lab test that changes nothing. Huge amounts of money are being made by these science labs, and yet, none of the results are accurate or guaranteed. Here is a brief discussion on the genetic testing situation. So owner Michelle Leininger got a test kit that retails for about $80, and it made sense when the results showed part German Shepherd, but there were 14 other breeds listed, and some of them? How is she pot? 4% Chihuahua. It just didn't make any sense. So the WBZI team brought over more test kits from different companies. They had a girl. To double a check. Girl. Here we go. Good girl. Good girl. And even triple check the results. Had a girl. Then we asked Michelle to swab her own cheeks. All right, there's one cheek. Good girl. The results? All of Jasmine's came back with some German Shepherd, but the percentages varied from 65% to just 29%. Aside from that, the three companies showed a puzzling hodgepodge of other breeds. One threw in Great Pyrenees, another Siberian Husky, Korean Jindo, and the list goes on. And then there was Michelle. Michelle came back as 28% Bulldog, 40% Border Collie, and 32% Cane Corso. Okay. I think that that is a red flag for sure. Dr. Lisa Moses is a veterinarian and bioethicist with Harvard Medical School. Part Cane Corso. What do you think? Yeah, I see you giggling. Yeah, that's a real red flag. Um, a company should know if they've in any basic way analyzed a dog's DNA that that is not a dog. DNA My Dog sent the I-Team a response clarifying that it only found canine DNA in one of Michelle's two swabs. All right, one each. As for the second one, the company said the second sample did in fact yield canine DNA. The results provided would not be possible in a human sample. Dr. Moses says the science is fuzzy. The first problem, she says, there are no official definitions for different breeds and therefore no exact genetic codes to match them. Finally, it is not a question of whether or not Boxer was crossed into the Connie Corso. Yes, they were. That is a documented fact by Paolo Breber, who started the resuscitation program. The question is, are those dogs Connie Corso or hybrids? 
Before I discuss the boxer being bred into the Connie Corso, I do not have any bias against the boxer breed. The traditional boxer was an exceptional dog, however, I do not care much for this new modern boxer, it is a far cry from what a boxer used to be. It looks nothing like the real boxer of the past. Let me clearly state, the boxer was not the only dog that was, and is still being bred into the Connie Corso that does not belong in the breed. Dogs such as the Great Dane, the Modern Neo, the Rottweiler, Presa Canario, Bull Mastiff, South African Boar Bull and the list goes on. These dogs were and is still being bred into Connie Corso. But my focus is the boxer because it is the dog of choice that received consent to be bred into the Connie Corso by those who were in charge of the so-called resuscitation program in the 1970s. Paolo Breber left that program in disgust because of this deliberate error that was motivated by nothing more than show dog money. Still, it was easy to convince the popular dog breeders that the boxer is an essential part of the Connie Corso. The fact is, it is only essential for the show dog breeders, the breeders of the hybrids. Now, let me shed some light on the Rottweiler since it keeps popping up in multiple conversations in defense of the boxer being bred into the Connie Corso by those who breed the hybrids. The traditional Rottweiler that was bred into the Connie Corso does not pose any changes in the genetics of the traditional Connie Corso because the traditional Rottweiler is a Molosser and a sibling breed of the traditional Connie Corso. If it was the modern Rottweiler that was bred into the Connie Corso, that would be an issue, because the modern so-called Rottweiler is not a Rottweiler at all, it is Pugweiler and a Bullweiler at best, meaning, it is a bull breed influenced dog. I hope this is finally clear. As for the Neo and the Connie Corso being two separate breeds. You are absolutely right if you are speaking of the modern Neo. But the traditional Neo and the traditional Connie Corso were one and the same dog. Politics and pride in the people of different regions in Italy caused the name change of the Corso in Nepal Italy to Neapolitan Mastiff. Here is an old photo of a traditional Neo, without the political name game, you are simply looking at an old photo of a Connie Corso. This is another old photograph, same case here in this photograph, the only difference here is one of the dogs was bred to be larger for different working purposes. Those who are not well informed of the dog's history would say the dog on the right is a Neo and the dog on the left is a Connie Corso. But both are one and the same breed bred differently. The larger dog on the right that the uninformed person would classify as a Neo is simply a larger Connie Corso that displays a lot more of the heavier traditional Mostino genotype. Let me bring this a bit closer to the present day to make the point, can anyone identify, which of these two dogs is the Neo and which is the Connie Corso? The fact is both were classified as Neo or Neapolitan Mastiffs. There is no difference between these two dogs and a heavy bred Connie Corso that displays more of the Mostino genotype. I will now share a few photos of present traditional Connie Corso. Most of you may find these dogs less attractive to look at when compared to those show dogs of today. To be frank, those show dogs are more consistent in conformation when compared to the traditional Connie Corso. Simply put, the focus of the breeders of the traditional Connie Corso was workability, not so much how the dogs looked. Pay close attention to their head types and how tight the skin is, on the face, especially around the mouth along the jaws. Notice there is no excessive skin or wrinkling. The muzzles are straight with no upturn. There is no sense of any bull breed influence in these dogs. However, you will have to find images of the hybrids elsewhere to compare these dogs to, because I do not knowingly share images or videos of the hybrids. If you have seen a lot of the old photos of Italian farm dogs with the farmers and family members, the appearance of these dogs will make more sense. Now, to be reasonable, the boxer crosses are beautiful looking dogs, some are well bred in terms of appearance, but appearance is not what determines a breed. I am showing footages of these dog shows because the dog show was a major deciding factor in boxer being bred into the Connie Corso of the resuscitation program. It is no secret that the dog shows are a major player in the destruction of many good breed of dogs over the years, and the Connie Corso is now one of those breeds that is near completely destroyed. As I have said, the traditional Connie Corso is an extremely aloof dog, it does not tolerate strangers being up close and personal with it. Is this the temperament of real traditional Connie Corso? If these are Connie Corso, how is this possible? 
There is a boundary that is established by the dog itself even if the owner allows a stranger to approach it, because the traditional Connie Corso is a very aloof dog by nature. Again, aloof means, it does not like strangers. Pay close attention to the movement of these dogs, they bubble, up and down and swagger from side to side when they trot or move, a real Connie Corso does not do this. These dogs do not have a cat-like gait. I did state that I do not share images of the hybrids, this dog show of hybrids is the only exception, for the purpose of this video. We will stop at this point for today, and continue this short journey on no loose skin or boxer blood in Connie Corso in my next video. Hopefully you find it informative so far.